capacitors of these sizes are very dangerous. They store, they can store enough power that could hurt you uh, or even kill you. And it also, um, when you're doing the screwdriver test, if they're fully charged capacitors and you test them with a screwdriver, uh, it can spark and actually weld the screwdriver right there in between the contacts. There's that much power. Uh, or at least you, you assume there is because some of the capacitor, you know, some systems will have uh, capacitors that have that much power. So these seem like they are already discharged and we use this little tool first, which is really just a current limiting resistor uh, to make sure it discharges slowly and a couple gator clips. So in case you're curious, the resistor that I'm using, like I said, is a 4,700 ohm and the colors are yellow, purple, and red. And then the final one is gold. But that just means that this resistor is within 5% of uh, what it's rated for. Anytime you're working with large capacitors, you wanna make sure they are fully discharged before getting your hands in there. Uh, and messing, you know, messing with the wiring or anything. Uh, so uh, probably the best way to do that is with a, you limit the current with a resistor. So what I have, uh, this is just two gator clips, and then they're both clipped onto a resistor, which you can see through the electrical tape a little bit. It's a 4.7 kilo ohm resistor, and when you, if there was 120, this is a 120 volt um, system. So if you had 120 volts across the capacitor and then you connect this to it, it would put 120 volts across the resistor and it should uh, lim will limit the current to 25 milliamps, which is a very safe, uh, range, a very safe range. Um, but it might take a couple minutes to discharge it. So you'll want to uh, carefully um, connect the gator clips one at a time to whichever capacitor you're, you're working with. So in this case you want to connect the gator clips uh, to each side. So I can put the first one on. And I'll connect this one. There should not be any kind of sparking because of the low current. And we're not even sure, there, I mean, there might be zero volts across it already if it, since it's been, well, I don't, you know, you always, you always assume that there is high voltage on a capacitor. So I have a voltmeter hooked up. It's even though it's an AC unit, uh, it's in the volts DC mode because uh, at this point, all of the you know the, the alternating signal or the um, the since there's no power going to it, uh, if there is any voltage present in the capacitor, it will not be a fluctuating voltage, it'll just be, you know, whatever's there. Whoops, whatever's there. So that's why you go with DC. Now there's the second capacitor that's uh, even larger. We wanna make sure we discharge that, except you'll notice there is actually a resistor already connected between the two. So, you know, they were thinking ahead. Um, but we can carefully check the, to see if there is a voltage just in case. Maybe the resistor isn't working, but no, it looks like there's no voltage across this too. So the final thing, the final check, to make sure everything's discharged, you can use a screwdriver and touch the two terminals. Now, this can be very dangerous if you haven't discharged the capacitors already. You're only doing this after we've checked with the meter and seen that there's no voltage across them. This is just a final check. Also, when you do this, you don't wanna to touch the screwdriver to any other pieces of metal, just the two contact so that you don't get any surprises. So I'm just going to touch the one side and they kind of slide across, touch the other. There's nothing going on. So I'm pretty confident that this capacitor is fully discharged. And I will do the same with this side, just lay it on this contact and I'll slide it down until it touches the other. 
and there's nothing going on. So both these capacitors have been fully discharged. 